Welcome, everyone. My name is Steve Stein, and I'm the uh, founder of Better Listen and Wisdom Feed and uh, the host of the Street Smart Wisdom Podcast. Welcome. Whether you're watching the recording or the live stream, love to have you. Any of you who are live, feel free to drop a, a post in the comments. And um, today we have our uh, Wisdom Feed resident uh, health expert, Maria Tabone. And today's topic is uh, weight management in a screen centric world. And it's, you know, whether you're working at home uh, or in the office, you know, everyone's in, in, in front of screens and it's a kind of a sedentary lifestyle. So we have Maria here to give us some tips on how to manage that. Welcome, Maria. Thanks so much, Steve. Hi, everyone. So nice to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, people who haven't heard of you? Yeah, no, absolutely. So I am a, um, I'm a holistic nutritionist and an Ayurveda practitioner. I'm also a health and wellness coach. And then in addition to that, I have certifications in herbalism um, and um, Reiki, um, clinical aromatherapy, and um, functional nutrition. I'm a, also a functional nutrition coach. So I wear a few different hats. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, so tell us a little bit about your approach and any suggestions you might have. And anyone who's uh, watching the stream, feel free to drop a question into the comments and then we'll get to them later. So, uh, all right. Uh, yeah. What do you got, Maria? Let's hear. Yeah. So um, I think this is an important discussion. You know, I, I read um, two interesting statistics this week. One, since the onset of the pandemic, screen time for in particular 16 to 24 year olds has increased 76%. And then the second one is that 74% of Americans are either overweight or obese. So you know, there's a lot of reasons for this. There's no blame, no judgment towards ourselves or anyone else. The pandemic has changed our life in our lives in so many ways. So many of us spend more time, you know, in front of the screens and really is ideal. And that contributes to being more sedentary. And then what do we do? We make poor food choices sometimes as a result. So screen time, it's been studied. It really coincides with mindless snacking and overeating. So which can potentially develop into habits, especially with the addictive nature of sugar, salt, and fat, like the three tastes that we love. So we all know that incorporating regular exercise into our daily routine is crucial, right? To manage our weight and overall health. Um, so personally, I wear two hats. One of them is as a nutritionist where I provide advice. And the other one is a health coach where I just offer support and accountability, um, no advice. So from my experience, you know, telling someone what to do doesn't really work unless they are ready to change. And, and that's the whole idea behind health coaching. You know, they really need to have a desire to change and be ready for commitment. And behavioral change, just keep in mind, requires about a minimum of three months. So please be kind to yourself. You know. um, so what do we do about this? I think with awareness and being intentional, and Steve and I talk a lot about this, we can really effectively manage our habits. You know, you ever found yourself snacking, right? You're watching TV, or even if you're scrolling on your phone through TikTok, you know, there's, there'll be snacks around and, and distraction and mindless eating their partners. So even if the snack is something like healthy almonds or, you know, other kinds of nuts or whatever, you can still gain weight, you know, from eating too many of them. But if you're mindful of that choice, whether it's chips or almonds, whatever you're snacking on, that just being aware can help you control how much you consume. The other thing is to listen to your body's hunger cues, you know, when you're just, when you're at your computer um, or you're in front of a screen. Sometimes it's not hunger, it's just boredom with the repetition of what you're doing all day. So take that moment to pause. Sometimes what I do is I go make myself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, whatever you wanna do, and then, and then take time at work especially to eat your lunch away from your screen. Because what are we doing at work? We're in front of it, we're 
stressed out most of the time, and you're just on automatic pilot. So if you think about just say an eight hour day, most of us work more than that, but we'll say eight hours, you can find 30 minutes in there somewhere to just take a break. Try to either not look at your screen or just move away from your desk if you can. Um, and I think I've, I've said this before when I've talked about nutrition and, and eating is chew your food thoroughly. Another thing we never do because we're not paying attention. So the longer you chew, the more satisfied and satiated you feel, you're basically fuller longer, which reduces, reduces your hunger level and then you end up eating less. And also people who eat slowly and chew thoroughly have less digestive complaints. Like they don't have as much abdominal pain, gas, bloating, all that discomfort. So if you find yourself prone to snacking between meals, a habit that I encourage you um, to minimize, but consider keeping some healthier options at the ready. Maybe some carrots or nuts or hummus, for instance. And before reaching for that snack, take a pause and ask yourself, and I've done this, I can tell you it works. Is this good for me? Or am I going to feel terrible after I eat it and then beat myself up over it because I'm, you know, so annoyed that I ate that? Um, sometimes that awareness leads you to make a different choice. So, of course, I'm sorry, yeah. Steve, did you want to say something? No, so, no, that's all great. And it just reminds me of, uh, uh, you know, so I recorded Dan Goleman you know, founder of emotional yeah. intelligence. This Love is before him. that was even a concept, like 30 yeah. years ago. But I think it's all about mindfulness, mindfulness in the workplace, mindfulness. Uh, you know, everything is an opportunity. You don't have to be on a meditation cushion or a yoga mat to be mindful. So he tells this story that, you know, I like to do my best to share that's relevant, I think. Mm -hmm. So I think he started his lecture like this. Uh, many years ago. He goes, yesterday, I sat down to have some lunch. I had a cup of soup and I had a sandwich. I took a sip of my soup and a bite of my sandwich and started to read the paper while I was doing all that. Mm -hmm. And he said, and 10 minutes later, I looked down and my sandwich and my soup were gone. <laughs> So it's like, and I call that story, who ate my sandwich? <laughs> you know, I just, it's resonated with me dec literally decades later. And so it's easy to go through your whole day. And especially if you're at, you know, at a desk working huh. and busy and, you know, so anyway, but that's, I uh, talks about speaks to, you know, being mindful moment to moment, you know, day to day basis. Yeah, and it sounds like something very simplistic, but you know, we know that it can be hard to do. But especially when you when you're sitting at a desk, it you really you can go through your whole day on automatic pilot at work, and if and you'd be surprised how taking those moments helps at work, even just your stress level, you know, with everything. Um, so I, I yeah, I I do it myself. I mean, I, I it's just about being aware. Right. And, and you have a couple of uh, tips or pointers. Or I do. Something. So, you know, look for, for additional support, right? There's these various health and fitness apps that can track your uh, physical activity, monitor your nutrition. And they also can serve as like a tool, a form of accountability. Um, you know, monitoring, monitoring your daily steps, aiming for the recommended 10,000. And, you know, especially if you're sitting at your desk all day, look, you can get up and take a walk around your office or just maybe take a walk outside your office for even 10 or 15 minutes. Um, one of the things, and a lot of companies are doing this now, and they're, they're giving um, wellness stipends for people who also work at home to purchase, is a standing desk into the workplace. I have one at my office. I have one at home. I've been using one for years. It really, I, it encourages more movement throughout the day, right? Now there's a recent study in fairness that suggests that a standing desk may not directly contribute to weight loss or preventing, preventing, preventing weight loss, but there are other benefits to stand while you're working. For instance, um, after a meal, your blood sugar levels tend to return to normal faster on 
those days when a person is standing. It also reduces the risk of experiencing like shoulder and back pain. And we know that prolonged periods of sitting are linked to higher risk of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and certain cancers, especially colon and breast cancer. Um, so it's something to consider. Also standing, uh, the research on that is it positively influences both health and productivity at work. So you can enhance the benefits too of standing by adding like simple little lunges, even while you're working, little lunges or even calf raises, a few squats, you know, dips on the chair, um, just to keep just to keep moving, just to keep your body, because, you know, also sitting in a chair all day long, you get stiff. Um, so it's it's just to keep that movement going. Um, in Ayurveda, which I mentioned that I'm a practitioner of Ayurveda, which is, for those of you that don't know, the it's an ancient medical system from India. And Ayurveda talks about taking a walk after every meal. It's called Shata Pavali. And so Shata means 100, and Pavali means steps. So literally the practice suggest taking at least a hundred steps after each meal. So what is that? How does that benefit you? It helps your heart. It lowers your blood sugar. It helps you burn fat faster and walking after meals helps your stomach empty faster and it aids the digestive process. You know, one of the most common causes of indigestion is a condition which Ayurveda calls Udvarta, which means upward moving digestion. So in the West, this is called gastroparesis. And this happens when food and acid lingers in the stomach for too long before emptying. emptying. And it's one of the major causes of gastritis or reflux. So relax and enjoy your meal. Don't rush through it. You know, take that half hour or so. And then directly after a meal, continue to relax for about 15, 20 minutes or so. And then after that, go for a walk. You know, obviously the studies say the longer you walk, the better. But 15 to 30 minutes is enough to pr provide significant benefit, especially to your cardiovascular system. So, you know, basically, I think, Steve, the whole idea here is to be aware, right? We talked about before, we go through chunks of our life mindlessly. So if you just start with one simple thing of just paying attention and being more mindful, you know, you can change those habits. like. At, when you're at that desk, you just be set an, an alarm on your phone if you have to, right? Everybody has a phone. Set a little alarm. I'll do that because there are some days where I'm at work like everyone else and you're just, it's insane, crazy, and you don't stop and you're feeling stressed. But when you hear that little, make it a nice relaxing gong, make it that sound that comes on at, and I'll, mine will say breathe and the other one will say, take a break for lunch. And what I'll do with the breathing is I'll just sit there through, through my nose, inhale three deep breaths at my desk, and you would be surprised how it just resets you. And I'll, and I'll move around. I'll take a walk. I'll do little dips and a few yoga moves that nobody can see. Um, and and it, it's amazing just how much better you feel. Right. I mean, I often will take a walk in the middle of the day. Uh, just to freshen up. It's harder in the winter, you know? Yeah. It's, so, uh, yeah. So any other tips or things that you can do simply either at your desk? I know sometimes I walk around my house. I look like a yeah. weirdo, but you, you know, it's okay. It's your house. <laughs> but, I, but I get, my kids are away now, but you know, so I don't do it when they're around, but, uh, but it's important. Um, yeah. So, okay, so healthy snacks, that makes good sense. And yep. uh, what what other kinds of things come to mind that you can do? Yeah, so, I mean, like you mentioned, you know, walking around your house. Why not? You know, even if it's in your office, it, because this is also, also for <clears throat> your mental health, too, and it all goes together, as we know. Get away from that desk walk, just walk around your office. If you don't want to go outside again, you said, cause the weather's not great. Um, if you're home, it's actually a lot easier, right? A lot of us have some flexibility to work from. If you're home, just, you know, lay on the floor and just do some, um, you know, bring your knees into your chest, 
do a little breathing, just do some stretching. Um, if you're in your chair at work, you can do that as well. Even if even something simple is like just bringing your arms up over your head, like this, and then kind of leaning them from side to side, stretching from side to side, just to get some movement going. Um, but getting up and getting that blood going is really important. And, and that'll help you feel much better. And the breathing. So Take some time to breathe during, look, especially at work. We're all we're like this all day long. Everybody's, you know, stressed out. So it's about awareness, right? But the other thing is, and, and why I say sometimes set that little alarm, it's doing it. You know, we know these things. This is nothing new, right? We know these things are beneficial. We know they're good for us. So it's kind of counterintuitive to have to set your phone to make, right. remind you to breathe or eat yeah. or, or move or do some stretches and things like that. But I think it's a, I don't know if it's an evil at all, but it's kind of a necessary evil. One of the things that you, you mentioned breathing and there's uh recently I saw on the news, uh, the quarterback of uh, uh, the Michigan Wolverines, uh, J.J. McCarthy, there's a picture of him meditating uh, before the big national championship game, I think it was. So, you know, kind of looks weird, but now it's on the, one of the biggest spotlight and, and he's doing it. So I think it's less of a, not that it's a stigma or, or right. looking weird. Now, if right. you, how do you do that? at the, in, How do you like sneak it in in the workplace? Or do you? So it's, it's, you don't, you know, you don't have to go somewhere and well, I'll, I'll tell people if you're really stressed out at work, go into the restroom because it's the only place to be private. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but if you don't have an office or you don't have a conference room that you can take a few minutes and go into, um, try to make what you're doing during the day mindful. Even when you're walking into the office, just, you know, we do a lot of mindful walking meditations. Just focus on the walking, focus on your feet. Whatever you're doing during your day, try to just be aware of it. If you're in a meeting, be in that meeting. Don't be in the next meeting or in the meeting you just had prior. Be in the meeting that you're in. Be present with the people that you're with. And don't be checking your phone. And, and you, Oh, okay. it's so rude. <laughs> And uh, so we did a watch party. We've done a, a good amount of work, fortunately, over the years with Thich Nhat Hanh and his American publisher, Peril Express. Oh, yeah. And we we had a watch party uh, a few days ago. It's still the replays in our Facebook mm -hmm. group. Uh, it's, a, it's one of the videos that uh, his uh, uh, Parallax uh published and it's about mindful practice in daily life so this is one tip that i took away from it uh, and you apply you can apply it to whatever you're doing so mm -hmm. i would say breathing in i'm aware that i'm hosting mm -hmm. a conversation that's streaming digitally with maria to bone right. breathing out i'm smi i smile right so you could do it taking out the garbage. You can do it breathing in. I'm sending this damn email to this person I despise. <laughs> and I'm mindful. But I'm mindful. I'm mindful. <laughs> That's me, the New Yorker me, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but and breathing out, I smile. No, breathe as breathing in, I'm aware that I'm writing this email. Yeah. Breathing out, I smile. So that's just a, a simple tool that you know, it was explained so simply in this short program that I, I, I'm using it now, breathing, you know, breathing in, I'm taking out the smelly garbage, you know. <laughs> it's breathing got out, I, to do I, it. <laughs> I, I'm aware that I'm taking out, you know, it's just, it's just an interesting kind of irreverent but practical thing to, to try to do. Right. Well, you know, I mean, you know, I, I well, I saw, T. Kadnan is a special place. I saw him years ago at Radio City. And that wow. was one of the things that he talked about. And the other thing, whenever I'm drinking tea, I have him to thank. Because, you know, he was the one that said, when you're drinking a cup of tea, just 
be with the like from I usually make my tea, you know, with fresh tea leaves and, and brew it myself and, you know, do the infusions and decoctions. But through the whole process, I'm very present with that. And, and that is something that I got from him. And I thought, yeah, this is so simple, but it's so profound because, again, even taking out that garbage. You just you have to do it. So why not do it mindfully? Well, what does John Kabat-Zinn say, right? Life is the meditation. You know, it, it's, it's these things, everything we do in everyday life, we should be, we should be there. We should be conscious. And once you start doing that, you start to realize how unconscious you've been with so many things. I, I had given him a, um, a talk recently and I said to everyone in the audience, like, you don't have to raise hands, but how many of you right now are while I'm speaking are thinking I got to pick up the kids what am I going to go what am I going to cook for dinner like you're everywhere else but here you know and and try to start to catch yourself when you do that and I'm sure at work look how many people are at work are like okay what time is it and when am I getting out of here you know <laughs> so it's just again, going, we're going back to just being aware. And, you know, and I, a couple of years ago, there was a commercial, I guess it's a football theme. I think it, it aired initially on in the Super Bowl. And people are in an office place, uh, office space, and there's a big, huge camel walking through the office. Wow. And in New York City? <laughs> In a word, could be. I mean, it was in a, a, a big office and it's commercial. Yeah. And some weird tiny person, he's going, what time is it? <laughs> and he keeps saying, what time is it? And he says, it's hump day. It's Wednesday. Wednesday. You know, so you, you, you're you already thinking about the weekend on Wednesday. So, uh, you know, and Sunday night, you're, you know, I get it sometimes a Sunday night overwhelms or blues. So I have to kind of walk back from the edge. Uh, but but hump day is, you know, it, it's, you, you know, it's uh, an example of this is not it. This 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 time, this space, you know, it's, it could be better. It should be better. So uh, now, it, and that's uh, an example in the workspace. So as we kind of circling back to weight management, so you said yeah. healthy screen, uh, healthy snacks, and how yeah. can we burn some calories? Is there anything you could do at the desk to just stretch or? Yeah, I mean, you you like I said, you can do you know some stretches, but if you want to burn real calories. You that's going to require some movement. Makes sense. Right. Makes sense. It makes sense, and and also. I, I really stress, I'm not a big, in Ayurveda, we are not a big believers of snacking um, because it's just your body then is working all day to constantly digest. You need to rest, which is why, you know, people talk a lot about intermittent fasting. But if you need to snack, or, you know, for whatever your health reason, or I would say, yeah, um, make, make the choices and plan beforehand for those snacks. So you're not grabbing anything mindlessly um, to eat, which makes it worse. But really the only way, if you really want to burn calories is to, after you eat, take that walk. Um, you know, again, it doesn't have to be a long walk. It can be 10 or 15 minutes, uh, but, but try to get up and move and to, again, to accelerate and to get that digestive process going, because the better your digestive system works, the easier it's going to be for you to lose weight. Because a lot of people that have problems losing weight also have digestive issues. So you want to, you want to try to work on that. And the stress doesn't help the digestion either. So, um, you know, really, if you can just get up and walk around, it, that would be really helpful. And again, do some squats at your desk. You know, it, just it, it, do some leg lifts. If you're home, like I said, you can get on the floor and just do some stretches that that'll definitely help you feel better. And, you know, you won't be as stiff, um, but the walking after lunch will help you burn some calories. Nice. Nice. Um, so 
you mentioned earlier about there are stipends uh, in the workplace yeah. for wellness. Now, is that as a practical matter, you know, sometimes they pay for apps or gym right. memberships. Yep. You know, have you seen anything done creatively with that in the workplace where people can apply it or use it? Yeah, I mean, I I'd like to see more done in the workplace with that. I would love to see um, the last company, one of the companies I worked at had like a lunchtime meditation that anyone could join. I think companies give money like for wellness apps for people to subscribe to memberships um, and, you know, gym memberships, but also, like I said, to buy the stand up desks, things they need at home that would be helpful. I think they should have, you know, lunchtime meditation lunchtime okay everybody we're going to get on a zoom or gather in a conference room we're going to get up from our desks um and move around a little bit and or have a lunchtime yoga class where people yeah. can join on zoom that that's one of the things we uh, you know the the sponsor of this podcast and the session is wisdom feed and wisdom feed plus mm -hmm. and so we're looking at uh, taking that uh taking our program into, into the workplace. And because, uh, you know, it's take our tagline is taking ancient ideas down to street level. So all these, you know, kind of esoteric things, but, you know, how are they relevant? How can they be applied in the real world? And a stressed out human is a stressed out human, whether they're in the workplace or whether they're, uh, you know, working from home or just at home. So it's, you know, it's really kind of a holistic view of, of wellness. And yeah. um, so this intermittent fasting, is that relevant to, you know, to be at the workplace? I guess you want to have, sometimes you need something. Sometimes I need, I mean, I'm not, gonna, I'm not dying, but I need something to munch on for my blood sugar yeah. or, and, uh, just to keep going and um, to kind of lock in to whatever I'm doing. But that yeah. I think breathing and being mindful is a good, good tool as well for that. Yeah, no. And I want to talk, I'll talk about intermittent fasting, but I also want to say like, I think what companies should bring back, because I noticed that, you know, things of course with the pandemic change, but it would be nice for them to do like little lunch and learns in the past. I have done, um, I've hosted lunch and learns in different companies and I like did a one on aromatherapy where, you know, you could help people make blends or tell them like what the benefits were. And for the workplace, uh, we made a couple of blends, you know, one was for energizing you, if, you know, at that three o'clock hour. And then the other one was, you know, we made calming blends too, but those are interesting things to teach people how some of these integrative things that they can do in their life, you know, even a little bit of yoga or breathing, because, you know, these things are all helpful. Um, but the lunch and learns would be fun, even if they're a half hour, you know, companies can do them on Zoom, people are working from home. Um, intermittent fasting, I think that is something that people should discuss with their doctor, depending on where they are health wise. I've been intermittent fasting for years. Um, there's a researcher in Italy, Walter Longo, who's written extensive, researched extensively on this. And the studies are really um, positive that it it helps people live longer. Now, there are some people that have certain um, health conditions like diabetes and other conditions where you, you really have to consult your doctor as to whether going without food that long is healthy for you. It's nuanced like anything else. It's not right for everyone. So I think that's something, you know, that, that people have to think about before jumping into anything. Um, you really have to make sure it's right for you. Uh, another concept that has come up uh, around Wisdom Feed is um, digital fasting intermittently. Uh, you know, putting like we've done great sessions before on sleep and not to have uh your phone uh, two or three hours before you go to sleep. Yeah. But, you know, we've worked with uh, Sherry Turkle and we have an, uh, and an, another a new session we just recorded with her and John Kabat-Zinn oh, about great. technology and computer and not only depression, but, but mindfulness and, and how it all ties in. And one of her books 
uh, it's called Alone Together, one of her books that came out a number of years ago. And she did all this research about your cell phone. And uh, the concept was, of course, we've all seen it. You go out for dinner and you see a family of six or people and they're all together, but they're all on their phone. So they're yeah. alone together. But part of the research is uh, that if the phone is face down on the table, you're X percent less distracted than if it's faced up, tempted to look at it. Right. So it, it, it's a it's a real thing. And now there's science. I mean, intuitively, we know you don't want to be distracted, but now there's science. And I guess that goes in the workplace, too. I can't you know, I, it's hard ideally or I could see um, like sometimes in schools now you have to check your phone at the door uh, before you, the class starts or put it yeah. in a little caddy or something like that. Uh, in the workplace, it's harder because your boss might be texting you something. And, you know, it's hard to know, you know, whether it's a text from your boss or it could be anything right. else in the universe that you're looking at. <laughs> but, it's a, but it's a form of distraction. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, again, we, you know, we know that it's right. Everything has its good and bad. And then but now we've gotten to the point of abusing like these phones are. Yeah, this and the studies and the research are all in and they're continuing to do them, how detrimental it is. Because I I just find it rude if you're out to dinner with somebody and there's two of you and you're on someone's on their phone, right? What could be so important? This is where I go, that you can't tear yourself. If you're an emergency room physician or you know, you have some kind of a, a job or something. Or in some cases, people have children when they need to be connected and get in touch with them. Or those are the, you know, a lot of those situations. But a lot of people are just scrolling TikTok. Um, so, and it's, it's become an addiction. But it's interesting. I wonder if, I, I had a friend say to me that she try, she did a detox and put her phone away for an hour. And she said she was so incredibly anxious when she during that hour that she couldn't look at the phone, but then started doing it every day and got to the point where she just wanted to toss the phone in the tray. She didn't care anymore. But I think, you know, again, it's an addiction and you have to sort of wean off of it um, over time because otherwise it, you're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I think, I think it was Sherry's research, but similar research is that, you can schedule to check your phone every 20 minutes or every half hour. Right. But, and then if it's not at your desk and you get up and go to it, and then it, it relieves, relieves some of that anxiety. Is anyone trying to get me? But you're also no. And again, maybe you set the alarm for 20 minutes or a half hour, check your email, put it, you know, but then now there's all this new research. I'm reading this book uh, uh, on the topic and, you know, how long it takes to reset. If you're in a train, trend of thought, train of mm -hmm. thought, you know, it can take like half hour to get back in the zone. And every time you check your email, you, so it's, it's, it's a, it's a whole distraction thing that needs well, to be. It takes three months to, to change a habit, right. For behavioral change to happen. So, you know, I get something, well, and we've talked about this, Steve, you, you, have to figure out how to keep the phone out if you're trying to fall asleep. So many people look in the middle of the night, check their phones. The first thing they do is when they wake up in the morning is reach for that phone. And, you know, again, there's an, an awareness moment. Why? Why is it so important to reach for that phone at every moment? Um, and we know that it, it, uh, it, it disrupts our circadian rhythm, our sleep cycle. So it makes it difficult, more difficult for people to fall asleep. So, you know, even just putting it out of the room at night it, is something that can be helpful because no one sleeps. Sleep is a huge problem. It's if you either can't fall asleep or people can't stay asleep. Um, and, and sleep, as we know, is so important for your health. So you really have to try to, you want to try to reset that rhythm. And of course, that all ties into uh, to overeating because you're, yep. you're drinking more coffee, and it's it's just a 
taxing the adrenals. So it seems like all these kind of effects, we've done courses with you on Wisdom Feed, you know, sleep management, yeah. uh, and wellness 101, how to eat and what to eat in the morning and the night. And, uh, you know, so we have those uh, excellent programs that we've done with you. So um, any final thoughts or things people could do at home uh, and maybe how people can find you? That would be great. Yeah. So I think, you know, a final thought would just to, to just to say, go easy on yourself and take baby steps. The last thing anybody needs is to be more overwhelmed with more things on their to-do list because we we all have enough to do. So take little baby steps. So, you know, tomorrow may, during the day, just take some time, even five or 10 minutes to just be aware. Just be aware of what you're doing and maybe take a few, even five minutes to just get up at some point, walk away from your desk, even if you're home, and you're in the midst of doing a lot of stuff, just, you know what, give yourself a break. Just give yourself a break and take five or 10 minutes to do absolutely nothing. Um, and as far as where to find me, you can reach me. My website is theholisticroot.com. And my email is maria at theholisticroot.com. So I'm always happy to answer any questions. And um, yeah, you can reach me there. Uh I think that uh, you've graciously offered. If someone wants to reach reach out to you, you uh, you offer uh, what do you call it a, uh, a complimentary interactive yes. session or something? Yes, thank you, Steve. I offer um, a thirty minute discovery call, like a complimentary call. Whether you want to learn about uh, health and wellness coaching, you might be interested in that. I do sessions on Ayurveda. I do functional nutrition coaching. So if you're interested in any of that, you know, go to my website and we can schedule a call or just shoot me an email at mariatheholisticroot.com. And I am happy to, you know, um, talk to you about whatever it is that you're, you're looking to improve upon. You know, uh, Maria wears a lot of hats. Yeah. One of them that she didn't mention, she's a has been a clinical aromatherapist. <laughs> now I've never heard that before. So, <laughs> but uh, you certainly have a, a, a breadth and depth of wisdom. So, you know, and so the contact info will also be, if you're watching the recordings, uh, you just feel free to reach out to Maria. And uh, also to check out, we have uh, great content, free programs on wisdomfeed.com, as well as, uh, you know, premium programs where Maria guides us on a deep dive into wellness. Yeah. So uh, I th think that just about does it. Anything else come to mind? No, I think that's, um, I think that's about it, but yeah. And, and I'm, I, I want to say Steve too, as an herbalist, I am enjoying thoroughly enjoying your um, classes with Susan Weed. Who is, it's really wonderful. I also encourage everybody to check those out. If you're really interested in getting into herbs, and learning stuff, practical things you can do um, and herbs that you can take. Uh, it's really wonderful. I'm so enjoying it. She's a legend. She's a legend. And we're, yeah. you know, we're really honored to have, you know, so people are signing up for it. Uh, we, uh, she, her book on menopause that she wrote, just sold the million. Oh, it's the Bible. The yeah. millionth copy, a million copies. She self-published it. And she's entertaining and a character. Yes. And uh, and the first course was your herbal medicine chest, which mm -hmm. is just a course on how to take different herbs and make tinctures or yep. prepare them in different ways. And they could stay on your shelf for years, sometimes even decades. Mm -hmm. And if you have a cold or if you have a this or a that and you build a... Uh, you know, you build uh, a medicine chest, and now she's yeah. doing this other thing on herbal infusions, and uh, she she's very, no, it's very great. I mean, for me, it's like once once I started on this path, the first thing I think that started um, uh, with yoga, and and then I became an herbalist, and it just it just snowballs because once you find out and you experience how these things can change your life. It's just you go on from one thing to another. And that's why I just kept learning and learning and learning and learning. 
So um, yeah, and I and I I really enjoyed. I'm enjoying it listening to her. And uh, yeah, and thank you for another excellent informative session. And I love that it's practical. You know, yeah. there are things to do to apply, and things that you can do and apply that you do not have to be, you know, at Omega or Esalen or right. fasting for two weeks. Just little things you could do to baby steps, as you said, to just make, you, you know, the quality of your day uh, just a little bit better. Yep. Yep. Great. All right, Maria. So uh, we will see you next time. Yes. Thank you, Steve. All right. Talk soon. Bye, Bye everyone.